So, so many cameras. So many cameras. So guys, a little uh, welcome to joining us on Pancakes and Coffee <laughs> with Matt, Dan, and we've got little Lee. <laughs> little uh, Lee today, tiny right? little Lee. Uh, he's five foot four, and we're going to talk about how being small in the box uh, still doesn't diminish your uh, <laughs> your morale. <laughs> like he's he's actually like six foot three. We just got him sitting on a ball. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! Huzzah! Shit. So um, today we are going to be, those of you that are on Instagram that just started following us, uh, Matt and I have a YouTube channel which is called Pancakes and Coffee with Matt and Dan. Um, so please follow that, subscribe and do that normal uh, shit that you guys do. Today we do uh, the, the Yeah, so fasting. please follow us. Um, yeah, I'm not on the ball too much because I started fasting today, so uh, which is very interesting. It's shit. It's fucking <laughs> I fucking yeah. hate you. I can't eat until two o'clock. Uh, and at the moment, I would gnaw on some of Cash's dog food, mate. I'm <laughs> fucking hungry. Who you can... Hungry, I can't even talk. But what's going to be quite interesting, he's going to do it for 30 days. And yeah. And I think we will talk about it once a week. Because if he can stick to it for 30 days, I feel like now he's probably going to feel shit. But then he's going to start getting into that realm of feeling good again. And it will be interesting to see. Yeah, 100% I'm going to stick at it. So uh, we'll see how it's getting on. Uh, there's a few reasons why I'm doing it, but we'll, we'll see how it goes and get the benefits from it. Right, okay, so we've got a few things that quite a few members have asked us to touch on, so we'll touch on that at the end. Um, but uh, we're going to really talk about getting uh, training into your day. So we've all got a million and one excuses. So my excuse, I mean, uh, just so you know, Lee's background. Well, Lee, Lee's got a uh, CrossFit box in... Somerset. Somerset, where them country folk are. <laughs> Matt, as you guys probably know, uh, has a really successful um, uh, nutrition company that he owns himself. Plus, he's a, a consultant for a really up and coming uh, food brand, food brand, which food is prep company. food prep company. Oh. Sorry, which is uh, Hit Kitchen, uh, and of course, uh, me and my wife own a Phobus. And I've got three fucking kids near enough a football team. So it's, uh, I think we cover a lot of a lot of areas ourselves. So there's all these fucking excuses why you can't, I'm not excuses or easy enough reasons for how to fit training in. So uh, let's discuss, by the way, we're having coffee from Gracie's and on Can you really just, just take note, apparently we drink coffee at the same time. <laughs> So if one person drinks, then the other person drinks, or we just drink at the same time. And we literally <laughs> just did up. it then, and, I didn't, and it just kind of... <laughs> Synergy. Resonates it. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's talk about fitting, fitting shit. So no, let's that. talk about Lee's day. So <laughs> Lee's day, yeah, cool. Lee, just explain day. a little Time bit about day. who you are and what you do. Yeah, so my life uh, split in two, really. So I'm a firefighter up here in London as well. So I do two days, two nights and four off. And the four days off, I'm at home running the gym, uh, as Dan said, down in Somerset. Um... So, <laughs> people like to see your face. Good to so many fucking. Uh, yeah, so getting training in uh, into that schedule has to be planned in for me to get you know sort of good six to eight sessions in in a week, and then has to be planned out to uh, fit that into my lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's hard, isn't it? So, like, not only do you have the stress of you started your business. When did you start that? Uh, Richard started 2014, no, uh, no, but no, the, the gym's gym. now open, opened up in March this year. It so didn't, it didn't take him four years <laughs> to open a gym, guys. <laughs> no, five, six years to open a gym. No, so you were a PT before, weren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then you just bought a gym this year, and you've already got how many members? Uh, 100 members. So he's got 100 members within how many months? Uh, that was in the first five months. That's fucking Five really good. months, which is an unbelievable That's a lot, achievement yeah. um, <laughs> as, a, as a business owner, um, as somebody who runs... A business and 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 understands memberships and stuff like that not as much as obviously as you boys do in in a, in a gym world but retention is obviously something that we all hold dearly but to be able to have a hundred members you're definitely doing something right yeah exactly yeah 100 percent. but 100%. what's interesting is that when did you become a firefighter into buying that gym um so i started with london in february but i've been a firefighter for three years so. yeah but so the, so yeah, what i mean is the trouble so what you've done is you've bought a business, Yep. you've then taken on a new challenge, which is something that you wanted to do, not for the money, you wanted to do for your personal achievement. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so you do four days down south, four days up here, and you've managed to create a, a successful business as well. So where do you find the, the time to train? Um, I just have to make priorities, basically, a priority list. Uh, so you make lists? Absolutely. Yeah, I plan my week and my biggest tip for getting your training in absolutely is to put it in your diary. 
uh, non-negotiable. Absolutely. Yeah, so so non-negotiable, isn't that? For me, both my jobs, you've got to be fit, strong, healthy. So um, I <laughs> love both jobs. So like butch, little such lady. a manly. You so <laughs> manly. Look at that fucking jaw. <laughs> I own a gym. Mate. I'm a firefighter. I save lives. Mate, you want to be careful rimming. You'll cut a clip off of that. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. It's like a fucking action figure, isn't it? <laughs> hey? Jesus. Yeah, so, I mean, I've had the absolute fucking privilege of coaching quite a few people in the fire force. In fact, uh, one, of my, one of my best mates is a fire force. So he's a fire force, force. firefighter, right? Uh, he's, which is a complete privilege. But one of my best mates, uh, Mark, he's, he's also a firefighter. And it's, it's not only that, it's, it, you, you're doing fucking long shifts, right? So you're fucked. So he's trying to find that motivation, uh, 100%. Plus, you've got travelling. You're, you're, you're up and down from Somerset. Yeah. Um, and, and he's just find, trying to find that discipline. See, I'm, see, you can train on your own, can't you? You can quite I comfortably. I'll walk in. Here. Yeah, yeah. I'll come in. I'll, I'll literally walk in. and He's like doing some weird fucking thing that he's, he's, he's got weight on his head and a fucking string in his arm or some shit like that. But he's, he's constantly. And my wife Gemma, she can fucking train on her own, right? Can you train on your own? Uh, yeah, I like to get a good mix of. I, I do, so I love training in a team as well. I never used to. I used to love training by myself. Yeah. I used to feel like I didn't get the same intensity. Yeah, but that was when you were bodybuilding. That's not when you. Yeah, were absolutely. Yeah. Never had done all that, all that weird stuff, and wasted my time doing. <laughs> what um, a wanker! <laughs> but like workouts like today. No, exactly. So once I've seen Leo in pec fly forty kilos on each arm. That's a good day. Mate, I literally done this. I done <laughs> that. Can you remember? I done. I got this. I got this workout which uh, which I, I learned through through a pretty fit guy, which was like this bench press workout. Oh. I done with him, mate. It's grim workout, right? But I literally with two fifteens. I would say I'm a relatively strong chap. I thought I was gonna split in half, yeah. mate. I felt like a fucking virgin meeting meeting like fucking Zumbala with a penis like this. It was incredible. Right? I thought I was gonna split in half. I was like, that way. oh, I gotta take it down. It's the hardest fucking move to do in the fucking world. Um, where was you going with it? I mean, look, I, I mean, I own a fucking gym. I literally downstairs from me is a gym. But being a gym owner, having, you know, got 150 members here, which, which every single one needs to be catered for, 100% making sure we're providing the whole service, is massively time consuming. And being a, a small business owner, I don't have a huge amount of staff. And the staff that I do have don't do any of the administration. It lays with me and my, my wife and I. Um, so I've been here before and I'm literally working. You've had to come and grab me drag me downstairs and he's like right now fucking train I don't care what you do just do I actually hit my best Randy yeah. time didn't I um, you dragging me downstairs but I can't train on my own I fucking fu- I, Gemma can train on she loves it on her own she, but she doesn't like people but she can train on her own me personally <laughs> good good decision to win yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but me personally I think it is the hardest thing I'm like, oh, I just can't fucking get into it. I can't scream into it. Unless it's like a five minute, if I've got a five minute planned workout, I literally, I, 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 I can't, I, I, I find it, I, there's no motivation. Probably because I like to show off. Yeah. But no, but I think, it, I think it does have a lot to it. I, I love think, that crowd yeah. thing. I find it really hard to find I, I think what, what you mean by it though is that you don't train as well as when you do with other people. No, no, no it definitely like, don't. So it's very demotivating for you because when you're, in because you, you're used to that CrossFit environment, that's where you get the most out of yourself. Yeah, it's very hard to then go right, I get the most out of myself in this environment, and I've got six classes a, a day mm. which I'm going to be part of. Yeah, and then I'm going to go into a quiet room on my own and go and do a fan time. It's yeah, never gonna happen. It, it's so difficult. And it's like, so today I'll do 16, I'll be working 16 hours, right? So, not which you're, you're going to be very used to, you're completely used to. Um, but you know, we're starting at five and, and yeah, sort of. You're still starting to do anything. It does a lot of things. But starting at five and finishing at nine, it's, it's a fucking long shit day, yeah. right? So, and then you're coaching all your members, you want to be on the ball for your members, and then you, you, you've got to train. So, the point we're making and taking the people that own boxes out of it is that it's having that discipline that this is a non negotiable, this is my time, 100%. I'm in here, I fully commit to that box, it's in my diary and I won't budget. And it doesn't matter what the yeah. fucking weather's saying, what the weather's doing, who's doing what, how my mate Terry's, you know, fucking inviting me wherever they're inviting me. So I'm here, I'm, I'm doing what I've got to do, and I'm gonna get it done for that one hour, and it's these are for- Yeah, and I think having a goal is, is, is the kind of main objective, right? And go, you go, right, well, 
We've got, <coughs> we did the NFG, the National Fitness Games, a couple of, how many months ago now? Two months in ago. June, yeah. Two in months June. ago. Uh, we is, that the, is that the one I got the, the heaviest deadlift on? I don't remember. Yeah. There's about 100 pictures of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> None of me, Literally by the way. Blew I, mean, up I, mean, I guess I wasn't there, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma, yeah. was the only one of Gemma was shows on <laughs> photo bombing some bloke going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we had a main focus was um, was that, and then I know that the summer came about, and then after that, I was literally like very much enjoying a good piece of pretty much. But yeah, now we did. Now we're now four weeks away. Uh, we've got to start picking it up again. But it is having that focus, right? Definitely. And I think with you, very much, I'm, I'm I get inspired sometimes when you come to a session when we go and train somewhere, and you've been up all night because you've had to save a couple of people's lives or whatever. Amazing. And I'm like trying to complain about the fact <laughs> that I had to work from five in the morning, six in the morning till nine at night. Um, but in that time, I was able to do my own stuff and whatever. And it's it's getting your food in, making sure that that's right. Getting your recovery in, making sure that's right. That would be a perfect case scenario. But you don't get that, do you? No, it's it's say it's, it's not always a choice. Some nights are quieter than others. But like you say, it's about having that, that goal. It would be very easy for me to finish. Uh, we do 14-hour night shifts. I think, oh, no, not today. But when I've got that goal, so we've got NFG finals in September 7th. Well, I don't have time for that to happen now. I can't take that extra rest day, so I get myself through it. But we can adapt your training as well. If you haven't had uh, decent sleep, a decent recovery, the nutrition hasn't been on point, uh, you know, or you've had a good weekend or something like that, adapt the training. Get through a sweat session. Keep the intensity down a little bit. Don't do something so skillful. And then build up for it throughout that week, and, and you know, train smart. It's bang on. Do you know what makes people different as well? And, and this is this is what will make us different. Is remember the feeling at the end of the workout. So many people focus on the feeling at the beginning of the fucking workout. Remember the feeling at the end of the workout. All right, that is that is the one hundred percent goal. Now this is how to do with it. Think about the end of the date, right? Because that's what we think about. Then I'm not going to talk on a man thing. Still good you think about the sex yeah. at the end of the date. All the Before, shit you're willing to do to get that sex at the end of the fucking day is incredible. Yeah. You don't think about the fucking chat up lines, the amount of money that you haven't got you're about to spend on this fucking chick, right? <laughs> do not so literally no, no, overdraft no, 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 And here's the thing, it's for fucking what? On a good day, three minutes <laughs> of a pump and squirt, right? That, but you think that three minutes, you will fucking sacrifice anything for that three minutes. But we do it the other way when we're training. We think about, oh, we've got to buy the champagne. I've got to tell her so much bullshit. <laughs> so many fucking lies which she's going to figure out for me to fucking... Yeah. So think about the last, the end result. Think about the sex at the end of the workout. That's what you should focus on. That's fucking great. I just, have you just thought of that? Just thought of that shit. Have you? Yes. <laughs> think about the fucking cum shot. We're taking that. 100%. We're taking that. 100%. Well, we, we've, we've, just, we've just come in and traded this morning and we've done... Um, By something a bit, a little bit sweaty, didn't we? With, <laughs> um, with, with the, the, but then we did the twenty-one, fifteen, nine, fifteen, twenty-one, but uh, row burpee over the rower, which is a grim workout, and that that rep scheme is made to make you quit. And yeah, I, I was literally stood up, so we were trying to, trying to get going on it. I'm like, I'm just terrible. I don't want to do this because no. it's going to make me feel shit. Sounds shit, but. Then it gets to the end, and it was like that was fucking great, wasn't it? It was amazing. Okay, yeah, it's the yeah. most amazing thing in the fucking world. I'm it's literally really like, like, yeah, it's, and it is that feeling you can't fucking beat it. So whatever you're doing, whether I know the majority of our audience here are either our members or CrossFitters, but whatever it is, get, just remember that end result. That's your one hour. Focus on it. Come out, come out, learning something. Sure as fuck. If your coaches aren't teaching you something every single class, change your fucking gym. Right, and that's there we go. Step, we go. Step our game up, um, <laughs> but 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 more importantly, make sure you're learning something. Take what you've got from it. Fucking analyze it at the end of the workout because you do this as a hobby. So for you to increase and get better and, and improve, really take. It's so frustrating when you learn something, you think, oh, that was great, and then you go straight back to doing the old shit you were doing previously. Really digest it, take it in, and think, fuck, man, that hour because that just makes it addictive. Then it becomes something that you won't sacrifice. You won't give up. You have to get something from it. So uh, that's the answers on that one. Right. Cool. Should we go through some of these uh, some of these questions from the members? So let's yeah. talk about. Can you put a couple of comments down below though, for for people who do watch this podcast, just as in like what you find motivational, so then everybody else can read it. 
And I love your analogy. And if, you're, if there's any other analogies out there that, that people yeah. think of, if you can top it. Let me know. Yeah, let's just put it down in the comments below, um, and then maybe we can discuss it next time. Right, uh, Jake, Linky Jake, Flix Jake. Right, Jake. I, kind of, I had a great night with him the other day. We went out on Thursday night. It was such a laugh, man. It was really good. He's not that much fun, though, is he? Jake's Jake's no, he's good. Not, he's not, he's in, he's he, in his tonality doesn't change. He's got that northern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only talk in one accent, and it doesn't. I'm monotone. so excited. Because you just called him monotone. You basically yeah, said mon monotone. Oh, damn. Thanks for being a member, though, Jake. Yeah, thanks, Jake. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for the support. After what well, um, you were just talking about, yeah. as far as anyone goes out with you. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, so Jake shot. wants to know about pacing, right? How do you pace? Uh, especially with Barbell, he was really interested in because he's now, he's probably about a year and a half into really getting into RX barbells and, and starting to move for that RX weight. So how do you pace? Um, and he, he, I think, just to kick it off, I think it's a really tricky question because you've got to understand the stimulus of the workout to understand how to pace it. It's not necessarily the weight. I, I'm well and more than happy to sacrifice weight to if I understand the stimulus of a workout. What I mean by that is if you're going into Fran and doing anything more than eight minutes on Fran, you've got too much weight on the bar. So you're not getting the stimulus of the workout. You're not doing Fran. You're doing thrusters and pull-ups with a heavy weight. It, for you, that's heavy fan, right? Yeah. So it's a different workout to what you're getting. Yeah. So I think the stimulus is probably, what, what's the intent? What time am I supposed to be finishing it in? That's what I would focus on, especially with, on, the, on the pacing side, um, especially with the bar. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's about understanding the workout, isn't it? So that's twenty one fifteen. Well, I just fucking said that. Yeah. Really, just bring something to the table. You know what I mean? <laughs> sorry, oh, I'm sorry. You, I know you wanted... said he would be yeah. good. You said Definitely Dan. Nice. Put him on. <laughs> it's his birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, <laughs> little Lee. All I get is shit. Tiny <laughs> little Lee. Yeah, go on, mate. Um, so I, I, with my gym, we we work off our ten rep maxes, and I gauge it that way. So yeah, th that's just the way that we make make ourselves a little bit different. So going um, through, are we going for a twenty one? Are you going unbroken? Yeah, Fran, I think. Do you think, ev un do you think everyone workout, should do right? that workout unbroken? Um, I not, it, not the gymnastic skill because I think that's different. Yeah. I think that's still that you can only you. There's so much. There's so many other things to take into it. So I would scale to do that unbroken. So I would go. I would. Uh, I would say to members, you should go to jumping pull ups if you want to understand the feeling of Fran. I would say you 100% take the weight down on the bar, go unbroken on the bar, you do jumping pull-ups or you change pull-ups for push-ups. And, and, and that's as, or ring rows, and that's as close as I can get you to understanding the stimulus of moving at that pace. It always makes me laugh though when people hear the word Fran and they haven't got a pull-up yet. And they're like, oh my God, I've got to do Fran. And it's like, you know, um, Nestle actually um, said, said really, uh, explained it really well last time we did Fran here. Because it would be like, if, any, if you've got a Fran time under three minutes, then the whole world feels like it's going to end when you finish that workout. Yeah. Like you're bleeding from your lungs, you are in a lot of pain, and you've done it. But if it takes you more than five minutes, then you're just doing... 45 yeah. reps. Yeah, exactly. Of, of you're, and, you're, um, you're not well. moving at your full capacity. Yeah, but because it does make it wrong. No, it just doesn't make it fran. That's yeah. not the stimulus behind yeah. it. Right? Does that make sense? Mm. I think, I think, so, back to Jake's... Understanding the pace, because we did it in the, in the engine room the other day, which I, th I guess he asked the question before. You're like the king of pacing. Um, yeah, but it's like, it's like knowing, because like, this is it, we did it. Take that to the, uh, that is, that's, that's now, now. Oh shit, king of, king of pacing. <laughs> Tattoo. So, but we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right across me fast as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your battery's gone flat, mate. Oh, you can't. Sorry. What's what? That? That was a so, big so, Sorry, that was a C bomb on there. What about changing the weight? Say, like, Fran, someone comes in, um, so I don't know your members, but say Jake's got a strength goal. Yeah. Uh, but everyone in your class is doing Fran that day. Would you let them change the weight so you put the weight up and tell them, actually, I want you to have to break that set to 21 into three sets because you've got a strength goal. So I'm not worried about you getting the intensity of Fran. Question. But I, would, he, would you, did you change your program? But I, I would change his mindset. I don't because I think that. The, I need to be able to control the room a lot better and understand. If I can, as a coach, I yeah. want to know what everyone's goal is. I don't want to go, there, 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 there. Oh, that's Jake's goal. Because I don't feel he's going to get the best out of my coaching. Okay. So as a coach, I need to understand 
I want to know what, like, the first thing Gemma always gives to us for any program is she's like, right, this is the stimulus behind this breakdown. This is the breakdown of what this workout is. So then we, when we're studying before we take the class, I know what I'm supposed to be getting out of it from that member. So for me to then go, I couldn't just do that with Jake. I'd have to be able to offer that to everybody, yeah. which then means that I can't, it's too complicated for coaching. You'd only be able to do that with five people tops. A well, serious coach, group, group. a serious coach would be able to maybe go seven people tops and know what's going on and keep track on it. So I don't think I'd, I'd be giving the best to the members. Um, and I, so I think the stimulus is, this is Fran, this is the time that I, this is where you should be aiming to get to as a minimum, adjust your weights accordingly. Um, that, that's the intent that I would have behind it. So pacing, I think you've got to understand the intent behind the workout, understand what you're getting out of it, and then put that into play. But also you choose to break, not that it chooses to break you. 100%. So it's like yesterday we had all those um, push-ups where it was 15, and some people were doing their first set, and doing like five or six, and then being like, and then falling down, and it's like, no, you should break when you've done three, and then do five sets of three. Leave one in the tank. Yeah, leave one or two in the tank yeah. and then make sure you shake it out and make sure you're keeping that core time. Do you know what I mean? And work with that rather than... <laughs> right, I'm dead. Okay, can I recover enough? FYI, I am the worst person for pacing. So just... Yeah. Uh, just uh, <laughs> He's the best I person. For, <laughs> yeah. First minute of the workout. Yeah. I'm yeah. always winning. I mean, <laughs> me and fucking Fronin will go toe-to-toe for a minute. Probably not. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Let's talk about Pauline Swan, the amazing Pauline Swan, who's one of our members. Incredible, sixty-year-old woman, or just turning sixty. Fucking, I, she's so inspiring. She's never walked into a gym in her life. She's lost. She's doing uh, nutrition review. She's lost untold four kilos, five seven, kilos? seven fucking kilos. She looks yeah, like an Adonis. Right. I mean, her husband owes us a massive fucking thank you. But um, also, it hasn't just been the fact that she's lost weight. She's it's her mental attitude as well. So she's, she's fucking, like her, her hormones have just shorted themselves out. Doesn't question a fucking thing. So she wants to know about pre and post training food. Now for women, it's very different to, to what it is uh, men, in my opinion, because uh, women, if they eat before they train, they lose weight. Uh, it, it works as a fat burner. Where with the male, it works the other way. It, you, you don't burn as much fat in a workout if you eat prior to the workout, at least an hour before. So... Did it, is, it, is that something new? Did you know that? Did I, did I give you something? <laughs> no, I feel that that's... I think you gave me something. I, I think know. I gave you something. No, I just feel that that's not right, but... Okay. <laughs> I mean, we're going to look it up. Yeah, we'll show, you, we'll show you. Yeah, show you yeah, depends, it just depends on what yeah, Shut your face. Uh, pre and post training. <laughs> but, pre, but pre-training, like, this, is, this is a funny thing where people always ask, like, what should I eat before I train? And it's, you know, a lot of my clients, I'll say take a spoonful of honey. Um, if you get if you're on the way into the gym and you are feeling a little bit tired or whatever, just hit that glycogen sort, hit that insulin straight away and just bosh, have that in. But yeah, you want to be coming in. It, but I train fasted all the time and I get a lot out of my workouts. You it. Yeah, where if you come in and you hate it, so so it's it just it, you've got to listen to your body. But then post workout is something that I hold very dear um, because. A lot of people will leave here at 6 a.m. and go to work, and they will feel rubbish at work when it comes to 11, 12, on. 1 o'clock. Um, and, uh, and so I think, I think that it's important that we look at hormone response, we look at insulin, and we look at you know, the recovery rate rather than have a protein shake. Because you have a protein shake, generally it's got whey protein in it, and most of us are allergic to dairy. So thus meaning that we are taking take on a whey protein shake, and you're actually going to have an adverse effect. With CrossFit, we go to that extreme state where we work to intensity. So yes, we are breaking down muscle tissue, of course we are, but we're also breaking down our energy system. So it's realizing how to replenish that as quickly as possible. So things like uh, apricots, strawberries, pineapple, um, all that stuff post-workout, because it's really, really high in insulin and low in fructose. Um, things like that would be so fructose. beneficial. Too high in fructose. Such a cock. Too high in fructose. No, fructose. Fuck yeah. I'm just making shit up. That is a very. I'm gonna fucking wipe the floor with you on this one because it is a fucking. But anyway, what do you reckon, Lee? Cheers. 
<laughs> so yeah, again, mine's a goal depending. Fucking hairy legs, man. Shit, you're such a thrill. You are legs. really manly. Yeah, you, you I know, feel like a fucking schoolboy. You, you, know, you know when you start tattoos. secondary school, and I feel like I'm in my first year, and he's like a six form. <laughs> Adam Ellsworthy. Yeah. I'll answer that, Adam Ellsworthy. We talked about this last night. Is that not why you put me down here on the floor? Fuck yeah. <laughs> 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 Tiny little man. Oh, look, what are you saying? Big hairy. Goliath. I'm just going to... Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, so mine is, again, goal dependent. Um, a lot of people want, want carbs and sugar and stuff before, before they train, and I don't really see the need of that, um, especially when usually it's something very... I'd say it's the wrong type of sugar as well. I actually like um, berries. Berries before the workout is the sort of natural rather than the honey. Um, so that's what I recommend. Um, especially stuff like blueberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and my ones go to. Uh, carbs beforehand. Uh, most of my clients are actually looking for weight loss. So yeah, actually, really common, yeah, so I don't, I wouldn't put things like oats and stuff like that in before pre-training actually. Um, and again, for an hour afterwards either. Some people are like, oh, you've got to smash all the protein and carbs straight after this workout to refill straight away. It's actually just not quite as, as true. Um, you know, I'd go for a lean protein source or something like that immediately afterwards, absolutely fine. And the carbs again, if you're on a weight loss goal, wait, wait an hour, okay? You're fat burning after your sessions, especially CrossFit style sessions, you're gonna get your main fat burning in then. Yeah, so, burn um, up, and then up. after that, get your carbs in about an hour later. You burn up to 38 hours, you know, on CrossFit as well, you do a serious, do a serious hour. Nervous system's Me, fun. I go for a bit of peanut butter and a bit of, a, a bit of apple. So uh, it gives you, your, uh, gives you a nice little sugar boost there from your apple, peanut butter, slow releasing. Nice bit of fats, um, and I'll have that about 20 minutes before I train half out before I train, which might be a little bit later than what you'd want to do. That or a pan of raisin. But, uh, yeah, that or a pan of raisin and a half a glass of scotch. <laughs> 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 don't really, I do a little bit. Are you going to train today? Straight, uh, are you going to uh, eat before I, you train, or are you going to go no, 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 fast? No, no, no. Well, see, I was debating this. So with this fasting thing, I won't eat now until 2 o'clock. Um, but I, because of work, I won't be able to... Uh, I have to eat first anyway, so I'm going to eat and then train, but I'm going to fuck around with it a little bit and see, like, I did not, now I actually feel really good, but I didn't feel that great when you guys showed up and went, hey, me, who are you to get a do you want to come and roll? No, fuck off, it was uh, definitely to, what you, I was you, thinking. You didn't feel good now because you taught him something. No, yeah, now, I've, now I've taught him something. To get, the, great. to get the main benefits out of it, though, you are better off doing something like light aerobic, you know, if it's a case of just trying to hit 100 calories, steady pace, you know, yeah. because you are in that fasted state, you, you, you know, if, if it's just a weight loss, the fat burning stimulus you want from it, then... Mate, Gemma fucking, by the way, Gemma program is an amazing road, I'll tell you about that later, it's really good, remind me to tell you about it, it's fucking really good. Okay, uh, Wolfie and Arassi, Arassi man, never been in a fucking gym in her life, rocked in it, she's a friend of Sharon's. Rocks in here. This, uh, she is mental. Mate, she's fucking mental. She's never been in the gym in her life. She looks fucking incredible. She's lost like, I don't know, something stupid. Everything. Like, it, like 10 kilos. But she's like moving really well. She's very analytical. So she really takes into everything you teach her. But she's amazing. And Wolfie, great guy. Super tight hips. Um, he was stoned last night. <laughs> was he stoned? He came in. He stone. looks like a stoner. He, he, he came in. He was like on his bong before he came in. And he came Such in. And he was on the rower. And he was like... Oh, yeah. So, Wolfie, what are you doing? You fucking stoner. Um, right, when do you start increasing weights into wads? Again, back to maybe going back to what we've just been discussing with regards to... You, you've got a, you're going to be better at something. So I'll fire on this. I think you're going to be better on some things than you are others. Like, uh, thrusters usually take people a lot longer to get into. But you see such big increases in your first six months to a year in CrossFit. So you're going to find things that you're really good at. You're going to find things that you find more difficult. Don't feel because you're increasing rate in your push press because you're understanding how to do that different drive, that's going to work. And I'm so glad you've done that, it's really annoying me. That's going to work the same as if, let's up that as well, go, go away. Um, that's going to work the same as if you're um, do, uh, doing a thruster, which is a completely different movement. So it's really fine what's good for you, but also understand the intent of the workout. If the idea is that this is a workout's programmed and you're like, fucking hell, it's, we've programmed hard, we know not many people are going to get through it, um, but it's programmed in that way for a games athlete, then you, you can take two views of it where you go, right, okay, well, look, I'm either going to try it now with this weight and have a go with that because I know it's that, or I want to get through that. I want to complete all five rounds. So what weight am I working with to get to them five rounds? 
Females are always going to take a lot longer to build strength. You don't have the testosterone like men do. So take that into account. And guys, the mobility is always the thing that's going to take the longest nine out of ten times. So take into account what skill set setting uh, is needed for you to be able to increase that strength. So is it going to affect your mobility? Is it going to affect your technique? And if the answer to that is yes, um, then, then never sacrifice form, in my opinion. Lee? I'm going to keep it really simple. Uh... Ask your coach. You fucking are. <laughs> See, uh, our, our gyms are different. You know, you can go pay twenty quid a month. Uh, one of these big, you know, anytime fitness and stuff like that. Pure Rent gym. Absolutely. Uh, like our gym, your gym, exactly the same. We got small groups. You pay a premium for that for this reason. You've got your go-to coaches. Uh, you've been working with them for a while, and they'll know. Are you completing that rep range in the time allowed with good form? Yes. Bang the weights up. Absolutely. Just don't sacrifice form for weight. Absolutely, mate. I fucking love that. Follow up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Drop mic. <laughs> just, just keep chucking gin on. Yeah. Oh, see, fucking right, man. All right, uh, Sophia, uh, the lovely little the Colombian Sophia. Uh, how many times uh, should can you train uh, before, a day before tiring the muscles? So can I ask this one? Yeah, 100%. I'll go first on this one. one before you guys just take all of the, uh, <laughs> all of the line, mate. Uh, yeah, but so what are you trying to achieve? Because if you're looking to build I muscle... I think she's looking at triathlon, actually. Just in her case, but no, go on, yeah. Yeah, so with a, with, a, with a metabolic conditioning side of things, so if you're looking to build, you know, fitness, per se, then it's completely different to if you're looking to build muscle. Mm. Because if you're looking to build muscle, you only want to be training, you know, those groups of muscles, like, four, five times a week, um, but then getting in your recovery state. Whereas CrossFit, very much so, will just obliterate you and your muscle capacity. So once you've done your, your workout, if you've hit the stimulus as we require you to, then generally you don't even need to do anything else. But if you are just looking to put on some muscle mass, then you want to be slowing it all down and you want to be just working in that strength zone and you need to be getting in your recovery. Um, am I right? Yeah, 100%, mate. I think I, I agree with that. How do you build muscle, Lee? I mean, I know you're struggling with your legs, but apart from that. Um, so, yeah, two, two hypertrophy sessions a week. But like you say, my legs don't grow anyway, no matter what I do. I've tried everything, high volume, high weight, anything. They're the same everything. size as my torso. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> fucking colossal. Oh, I'm just going to tense up. Oh, well, um, sorry, I didn't see your wank. It's all that, that hair, you see. That puts me in a couple <laughs> yeah. of inches. Shave my legs, I've got nothing there. Um, yeah, a couple of hypertrophy sessions a week or accessory sessions uh hitting sort of that eight to twelve rep range um but training how many times a week to train was the question wasn't it yeah how many so times a day a day uh yeah again train smart so there's no point hammering your legs twice in the same day um rely on the programming here so jen does it so you're not going to be working the same muscles over and over again three four days in a row um and works. Also, listen to your body, man. Don't just suddenly start going, right, I'm going to train twice a day. Like, If you're going to train twice a day, then you've got to reduce certain areas for your body to get used to that training twice a day. And like what Matt said, what's the intent behind it? Take it slowly, build up slowly. So if you're thinking about going out running and you just had a fucking legs day, then don't go and run 15 miles. Go for a run and find out what the intent is. Is it to flush the legs out or is it that you want to build your, uh, your, your distance that you can run? Therefore, don't do it on a legs day. You know, that's that's probably planning is is key to it. But if she is looking to do a triathlon, then you can be training two, three times a day. As long as you're getting in the food that you need to be getting in and getting in your stretching and your mobility, then your heart rate can be trained. You know, two, three times a day easily. Um, so if you are trying to fit it in over the weekend, don't ever feel shy to maybe have an anaerobic session or like an aerobic session in the morning is what I would do and then have an anaerobic session in the afternoon Um, so then you can build that capacity so if you're trying to fit it in over your week you are actually able to get those that in slowly slowly yeah alright guys so look listen that's uh, that's us from uh, uh, from me and Matt and little Lee Uh, I hope you've uh, I hope you've got something for it if you do like it give us a like give us a subscribe send it to your friends tell fucking everyone about it uh, and we'll keep doing this and uh, also if you've got more questions for us Please fire them over, DM me, DM him, DM him, YouTube us, whatever the fuck it is you do. Have an amazing day. Thanks for watching and uh, peace out. Cool. Thanks, guys. Still waiting for the pancakes. And, yeah, where the fuck are the pancakes? <laughs> and live. Should get a delivery. And live. Share story. Share story.